Greetings, this is Brother Dawood. Um, I want to touch on something. I'm going to go back to um, new, to New Orleans again, to the Calio Projects. When you go online, when you try to look up, or when you look up anything pertaining to Calio as far as clicks, you'll hear of Sam Scully Clay Gang, you'll hear on the Glenn Metz Gang, or you'll hear up on the Richard Pina Gang. But I want to touch on the click. And this click consists of Brunel, Chris, Johnny, Kluki, Bruce, Percy, Kev, and Herbert. And they are the Tuesday crew. Out of the names that I just mentioned, we know one of these members of this group. The name that I mentioned, Percy, we all know him as Master P. You know, um, Master P and his brother Kev, you know, Kevin Miller, they from um, Back of Town Calio Projects, you know, um, Mero Court on Evada Street. You know, they stay there with they, with they, um brothers, their sister, and um, several family other me um, members. You know, they, they, they grandmother and grandfather was like the head of the household. You know, it was like 17 members all up in the house. And um, you'll usually hear Pete talking about how when he was coming up back in the Calio, that it was like 17 people in the house, and that he they didn't have he didn't have no bed that he slept on the floor for years. He he mentioned that a lot in certain interviews. But um, P he um saw like some of the things that was going on in his neighborhood at the time. You know, people getting their hustle on, getting paid, and he was you know he was into basketball. Like he comes from a basketball family you know like they they all was good even his aunt it was all good in basketball so now you know p he was a um honor roll student in school he was involved with a lot of activities you know he was like um school president and a couple of other things but he had a dream and a vision and he seen basketball as an outlet for getting his family from up out of the Kelly projects you know because he wanted to see better for his family, you know, they had a lot of good times and a lot of bad times going up there. You follow? Okay. So now, Pete is coming of age to where he's seeing the glitz and gold of that whole lifestyle of the streets. And he felt like he wanted to chip in and help out at home. So I believe maybe like around by like about 14 or 15, maybe younger than that, P jumped off the porch, you know, and jumping off the porch means going out there, getting to how you live, or, you know, getting involved with that life. So he jumped off the porch, and the person that introduced him to the game was his cousin, um, Jimmy, Hopway Jimmy, or Hot One. He was the one that started showing P the ropes to the game, you know, um, the do's and don'ts. You know, um, how to play the game the right way. You know what I'm saying? You follow? Okay, so. And Pete Cousin, Jimmy, you know, he was a man. Like, he was this young dude that a lot of people had respect for. And at this time in the game, this is like the whole, um, Sam Scully era. It was like in, like, like that early 80s going close to the, to the mid 80s, you know? And... At this time, you know, this the whole crack coat king ever was about to really take off big. Sam Scully was the one that was like supplying like the whole city at the time. You follow? And within the Calia projects they was all united at um one time and you had some that felt that they wanted to break off and do their own thing. And there was a vision from Glimet, so to say. They felt that the he felt that the old school drug game wasn't happening no more, and he had a vision of ushering a new template to the game. You know, so there was this feud going on, which resulted to that um, Sam Skelly being um, rubbed out or dusted, so to say, or um, taken out. You know, and you already know the story. I said that in my own um, other video. 
But now you got a time frame now to where Glenn Metz was forming a monopoly on the game in the city. And if you wasn't part of that network, you couldn't hustle. You know, and if they found out that you was hustling, you know, there was uh, consequences behind it. If you was hustling, if you wasn't part of their network. So you had P, you know, because his cousin was going back and forth to being locked up and all that. Um, Jimmy, so P, his brother Kev, Brunel, and a couple of them, you know, just right before they actually became the Tuesday crew. They was out there getting to how they live, you know, they were some young dudes out there hustling on a, a certain level, not nothing really big or major. They was out there having fun, making sure like little bills and stuff in the house was taken care of. So, with this whole thing being formatted and submitted a certain way, P and his boys, you know, they was rocking from um, 4th and Galvis, you know, they set a shop up there. You know, they, 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 they had, um, they was playing Russian Blade and Errata, and they was playing, um, the, the, the Taff, Rose Tavern, you know. He's some young dudes out there just, you know, getting a little small, hustling on a small level. You know, teenagers trying to, like, you know, help out with, with stuff around the house and all that stuff like that. So, there was a situation that occurred. P and his boys was out. They was um, trying to holler and get at these girls. So they all jumped in the, the bus, you know, on some old trying to pick these girls up, you know, holler at them, so to say. And then next thing you know, they, they almost got robbed by some um, dude from um, another hood. They didn't have their gas on them. This is something that I um, seen online, by the way. But it's more to the stories from other sources, from people who I talk to. And I got more than one person's confirmation before I put the story out. But anyway, it results in them, to them, uh, beating the brakes off dude. You know, they, 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 they kind of like, to him, yo, you don't want to do that. Like, letting him know, like, what's, what's, what's going on. You know, reaching in their pocket like they had gats, but they didn't. And the piece said that they left their gats back. Um, and the projects in their car, they didn't have it on them. So, this whole thing, this whole event evolved, and they wilded out. And this was just, this was the beginning of that what you call a Tuesday crew. Now these are a bunch of young dudes. The names that I named, you know, the Bunnell, the Chris, Johnny, Tuki, Bruce, you know, P, you know, Percy, his brother Kevin, Herbert. You know, they formed this this Tuesday crew um thing. They was getting a hustle on, you know. Getting how they live, getting their money on. They was out there with these motorbikes and everything. They had like the motorbikes, like the mopeds, like matching outfits and all that on some old player, like player type stuff. You know, they was they were shy with it. You know, um, they was partying, like they was hitting different hoods with their cars and stuff like that, and they was shining. Like this, the everywhere they was rocking the them them valley. Them Bali medallion, um, they had them, them Bali medallions with the saw blades what, on their chains, and all of them had their names on it. You know, P had his name, Percy, on it. They all rocking those, um, Bali chains. And I don't know, if you notice, see, P, what he did, he touched on some of the Tuesday crew history in the movie, I'm about it. Some of the characters. And the movie was based off real characters, but behind different names. Because, I don't know if you noticed, at the end of that movie, he says some of the names and some of the um, events in the movie was put a certain way to protect the guilty. And if you read between the lines, you'll see that, you know, some of the events that actually took place in his life and some of the events of the Tuesday crew, it was implemented in that movie. And then remember the part when he was counting his money in that movie with, when the Fiend song came on? Don't F around. P had on one of those chains. One of those um, valley chains with the saw blade um, edges on it. And he, it was a P right in the middle of it. So he was showing you. He was actually taking you back to his Tuesday crew days. And you had mad clicks out there that was competing with each other on the streets for the drug game. You follow? So now, they out there rolling. 
and getting how they live. And you got this war going on within the Calio and among the Calio because of the death of um, Sam Skelly. This whole thing, you know, like family members and people that was loyal. You so all this commotion and all these different things is going on. So now P felt paranoid. He always felt like somebody was out to get him. So he had to change the plan with his own thing. He got up and left for Cali, you know, to get away from all the stuff that was going on. And I believe right around this time when he left, his grandfather um, passed away from a malpractice um, um, situation that happened at the VA where they gave him the wrong medicine and he um, passed away, which resulted in P receiving... Um, 10 G's. So P's up in Cali. Out there. You know, trying to um, do things legit. Change his life. But he was up there in, um, in Richmond. A little bit. You know, wild and so to say. But Kevin. Stayed behind. A couple of dudes from the On Tuesday crew. They were still getting their um, hustle on. And doing their thing. P had a way where. He was trying to. Um, go legit. And come back home one day to take all his boys from out of that element. Because he felt that, you know, that whole drug game wasn't the answer. Because it had him in a state of being spooked, so to say. Because he always felt somebody's out to get him. That's why he wrote that song, Somebody's Watching Me. But now, Kev back at, still back in New Orleans. And from some reports, and some people said that, Kev... And a couple of, of his boys, they was doing their own independent thing. They was breaking away from not wanting to be a part of the network no more. Because they felt that, you know, we out here doing this work and all that. And we want to be successful and have our thing too. And it was said that, you know, um, if you look at that Silk interview on, I think it was Vlad TV, I believe. He said that his own boys... Um, set him up. But if you look at the Bowed It movie, remember the part, the character that was played by Pac Man, which I mean, Servon Pac Man, and um, P said that uh, Pac Man served out, served, sold his brother out for um, a key of cocaine or something like that. This story really happened in real life. You know, one of Kev Boys. Because it was, you had the Tuesday crew, which was all loyal to each other, but you had those other boys that was outside of the, the main crew that they was close with. You know, outside of, like, they, they clicked one of them that set them up because they was promised a bigger piece of money and they set up this whole situation to where Kev get knocked off. And, and um, Kev was set up by his own people. And there's different rumors on who actually was the people behind getting uh, Kevin knocked off because of jealousy. You know, and remember that song R.I.P. by um, P? And he said, um, in the lyrics, he said, um, I'm trying to think how he said it. He said, sometimes I wonder, did my brother know who really slit his fucking throat? Because he had people around him. Kev didn't want to leave New Orleans. And this is the one that T. Murder patted himself after because Kev wasn't no joke either back in those days in the street. And a lot of people know that he's a Tuesday Crew um, member. Kev was known for handling certain situations. He was he was that dude. He was that goon. And, and P was too. P was more on the um, level of organizer and putting people in positions to where, you know, things could be a certain way. So Kev get killed. And now you have some of the other members from the Tuesday crew still out there. And this whole drought period happened. You know, because now at this time, this is like 90, going into 91. You know, P out there in Cali, he, he started his own um, record label, No Limit. And um, the Glenn Metz gang took it out of circulation. You know, the feds came down, shut down that whole operation. So now... At this time, in the project, there's like a void there. And 
you had Big Boss, P Boy, you know, P right hand man. He was doing his thing. And the Cali, yo, throwing that void. But P sent back word to him, like, nah, man, I'm about, I'm doing this thing with this music. I'm gonna throw that rope over to get y'all out of that lifestyle. But a situation occurred to where Big Boss wound up getting locked up. So he did some time. I think Big Boss did about five years. And, um, and P cousin Jimmy did about, I think, like eight years. So. Only person you had really back out there that P was tight and close with was some of the members from the Tuesday crew, but his honorary cousin, Randall. You know, so Randall was at the Cali, you know, holding it down, being like the landlord, making sure things was good. You know, um, he was doing his thing. But at this time, you know, this is when the whole peanut era started emerging. And P and Cali, so now we come to that 95 era with P coming back to New Orleans. And this is around the time when the true album comes out. And um, you got the 95, 96 era. And P started, he made so much money on that level from 95 to 96. So when he was trying to come back to school, some of the people up, uh, um, he was trying to, I'm trying to get the story right. He was basically trying to like hire everybody in the hood with different jobs. He had things set up. He was setting such certain, certain situations up. He was giving money to some of his boys to invest into businesses. So they're going to get caught up out there. So now, out of this whole Tuesday crew click, you had um, Bruce and Vanell that got hit up. You know, they both got shot. Uh, um, I believe they got shot in the head. This, you know, um, I believe Johnny got hit up too, if I ain't mistaken. And you know, I already told, I already mentioned, um, Kev. But, right now, the only members that still exist, I believe to this day and time from the Tuesday crew, is Master P himself, Kluki, and Herbert. I think these are the only ones that still left from the Tuesday crew. But, Tuesday crew had left a mark and a legacy in the Calgary area. You know, they was like these that that young clique that was like trendsetters and um and colorful with it when they when it came down to like flashing and being flamboyant. You know, they these guys was like all the hoods in New Orleans had they um they they different cliques and teams that went out there and showed off and um, was flamboyant with they um, cars and everything. But the Tuesday crew, you can see that they had this more of a, um, they was, they was splashing with it because, look, you still had some of the remnants of the Tuesday crew around, which is on Master P. You know, he took that New Orleans lifestyle, that format, that whole um, get it how you live mentality, Went to Cali with it. He 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 combined. He he was, he did some alchemy type thing. He took his New Orleans lifestyle, married it with the Richmond Cali. You know, um, independent game for the music and all that. Cause you had people doing independent music in New Orleans too. But P married both for the coast and. Like he said, he always said his music is like gumball. You know, you gumball, you, you put a whole bunch of stuff together and you mix it, you know, and, and it'd be a good dish. But that's what he did. He always said that my music is like gumball. He took the, the South Coast and the West Coast and he brought it down. Like he exposed the world to his 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 mind, his vision, you know, his, his hood. Because prior to No Limit, you didn't really hear about New Orleans like that if you were from different parts of the country. You follow? Pete opened up that door. And in that About It movie was that, that gateway. And like I said, if you read between the lines on that About It movie, Pete was showing you, or he was explaining his story with the whole um, Tuesday crew in that movie. Just got to know how to look. 
you know, at the beginning, when they was all at that table and they had that meeting, he had that, that chain on I was telling you about, that medallion, the saw blade medallion. That was on some, that was some Tuesday crew shit right there. And they was really voting like that there, you heard? But, um, man, I'm just trying to do justice with this story, you know. I hope that the viewers be pleased with this on the Tuesday crew. You know, um, they were some go-getters. They was about that grind. I was about getting that money. You know, um, a lot of them, they had, um, had tragic deaths. Like I said, you had Benel and Bruce that got hit up. And Chris, I think Chris got hit up too, and Johnny. And that's, like I said, the, the three that's only left is, I think, only P. Well, I mean, not think only P. P, um, Kluke, and Herbert. That's it. You follow, and, hey, you know, just, um, leave a comment in the comment section. If you're new to hearing, um, my YouTube channel, subscribe to it. You know, the Dawu pages. And hit that like button. You follow? Shalom. Salams. Godspeed.